most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree? Let's talk about money. Men and women have been concerned about money since the first coin was fashioned in Asia Minor about 700 B.C. You might say that money's like good health in that we're concerned about it to the extent that we don't have it. The purpose of this message is to get down to basics, to clear the air surrounding the entire subject of money. To do this, I'm going to have to get absolutely elementary, and while you may already know most of the things I'm going to say, I think it's important that we remind ourselves just exactly what money is, how much of it is enough, and how to earn the amount of money you need to live the way you want to live now and in the important future years. To begin, let's get rid of the old myth once and for all that money is bad or unimportant. It is not bad, and it is important, vitally important. It's just as important as the food and clothes it buys, the shelter it affords, the education it provides, and the doctor's bills it pays. Money is important to any person living in a civilized society. To argue and split hairs to the effect that it's not as important as other things is absurd. Nothing will take the place of money in the area in which money works. That's all there is to it. What is money? Money is the harvest of our production. Money is what we receive for our production and service as persons, and which we can then use to obtain the production and service of others. We can quite often accurately gauge the extent of our production and service by simply counting the amount of money we receive for it. You will still hear people say, money won't bring happiness. The earning and possession of money has brought a lot more happiness than has poverty. Money is a warm home and healthy children. It's birthday presents and a college education. It's a trip abroad and the means to help the older people and the less fortunate. We're not saying that piling up a lot of wealth is important. What we are saying is that money is important because it's the only reward which is completely negotiable and can be used by everyone. Look at it this way. A diamond is more valuable than a lump of coal, yet that's exactly what a diamond was at one time. And just as a lump of coal can be transformed into one of the world's most valuable objects, a human being can vastly increase his own value to the world. Try to remember this formula. The amount of money we receive will always be in direct ratio to the demand for what we do, our ability to do it, and the difficulty of replacing us. A highly skilled human being is worth more money in our economy than a person who is not highly skilled and who can be easily replaced. This is not to say that one person is any better than any other person. Remember that in this message we're only talking about money, nothing else. This is why there are few limitations on a person within his company and industry. His income will be an exact proportion to the demand for what he does, his ability to do what he does, and the difficulty of replacing him. That's why the whole idea of trying to get something for nothing is ridiculous and won't work. A top jockey will earn upwards of $200,000 a year, which will represent 10% of the winnings of the horses he rides. You might say riding a horse serves no useful purpose. But the demand is there, useful or not. It's the same with a star in show business. His or her income will very accurately reflect the demand for what he or she does. And that's why preparation for life is so important. Luck has been defined as what happens when preparedness meets opportunity. A great opportunity will only make the unprepared, the unqualified, appear ridiculous. For every one of us, opportunities are all around us. Our ability to see them will depend, in large part, on how well we have prepared ourselves. Now, how do you stack up in this regard? Now, while this may sound elementary, you'd be amazed at the number of people who want more money, but don't want to take the time and trouble to qualify for it. And until they qualify for it, there's no way on earth for them to earn it. It's like the person who wants a good-looking figure, but doesn't want to stay on a diet long enough to get it. To nine-tenths of the world's population, the average North American is already rich. There's a greater difference between the standard of living of most of the world's population and our average worker than there is between the standard enjoyed by our average worker and the richest man in the country. Our working man has just about everything the wealthiest man has, only smaller. He has a home, car, often two of them, radio, TV, savings account, debts, they're just smaller. His food is as good and just as plentiful. 
His bed is just as comfortable. His home is just as warm in the winter. He has exactly the same amount of time and just as much, maybe more, freedom. His life expectancy at birth is 70 years. For the rest of the world, on the average, it's less than 40. With only a fraction of the world's population, we in the free world have half of the world's total money income. We have more than two-thirds of all the automobiles on Earth. So in talking about money, let's understand that we're already rich as people. Now, how much do you want? How much money do you need to live the way you want to live to accomplish the goals you have established for yourself? Most people think they want more money than they really do and settle for a lot less than they could earn if they went about it the right way. The world will pay you exactly what you bargained for, exactly what you earned, but not a penny more. You remember the poem that goes, I bargained with life for a penny and life would pay no more? Well, that's about it. We will receive not what we idly wish for, but what we justly earn. Our rewards will always be in exact proportion to our service. If you don't like your income, you must devise ways and means of increasing your service. And this is an individual thing. No one can do it for you. Although you can get ideas from others, your service must come out of you, your mind, your abilities, and your energy. A strong man cannot make a weak man strong. But a weak man can become strong on his own by following a specific course of action for a sufficient length of time. And a man who's already strong can become a lot stronger. It's the same with this business of money. A man who refuses to do more than he's being paid for will seldom be paid for more than he's doing. You may have heard someone say, why should I knock myself out for the money I'm getting? Now it's this attitude which, more than anything else, keeps a person at the bottom of the economic pile. He doesn't understand that only as we grow in value as persons will we receive the increased income we seek. If we try to stand still in our work, and millions do, we'll never know the rewards, nor the joy of accomplishment and the personal satisfaction and peace of mind which come only to the person of unusual achievement. There are two distinct steps we must take. First, we must decide how much money we really want. Once this decision is made, the second step is to forget the money and concentrate on improving what we now do until we've grown to the size that will fit and naturally earn the income we seek. Once we're fully qualified for the amount of money we decide to earn, we'll soon find ourselves earning it. And we'll also discover that with our new powers and abilities, it's no more difficult, perhaps even less difficult, than what we're now doing for the money we're now earning. Now ask yourself, how much money am I perfectly willing to earn, realizing that the amount I earn will be in exact proportion to my skills, the demand for what I do, and the difficulty of replacing me? There are really three amounts of money every person should decide upon. One, the yearly income he wants to earn now or in the near future. Two, the amount of money he wants to have in a savings and or investment account. And three, the amount of money he wants as retirement income whether he ever retires from active work or not. Now, it's here that most people make a very serious mistake. They never decide on any one of these three amounts of money. If you will decide on these three amounts, and if you will write them on a card to carry with you or put someplace where you can review it from time to time, you will automatically have placed yourself in the top 5% of the people. You will have a plan for your future, a blueprint for future financial accomplishment. You will know where you're going, and if you're serious about it, you will most certainly get there. You see, the trouble with people is not in achieving their goals. They can do that. It's in not setting goals that people get in trouble. They leave it to chance and find out sooner or later, and to their sorrow, that chance doesn't work, that they've missed the boat. It's estimated that only 5% decide on the money they'll earn and then grow as persons into the size of the incomes they seek. They thus take their lives, their fortunes, and their futures into their own hands as they should and accomplish their goals right on schedule all the years of their lives. You can do the same thing, and you can do it starting right now. There are two kinds of people where money's concerned. There are the majority who cut back on their wants to fit their incomes, and there are those free spirits in the minority who make their incomes fit their wants. Now, which is best for you? You must decide. Ben Franklin gave us the secret to wealth. He said the road to wealth lies in augmenting our means or diminishing our wants. Either will do. 
But the quickest way to wealth is to do both at the same time. Now, when you write down the yearly income you mean to earn, you no doubt know whether or not it's average for the work you're in or above average. The chances are good that the figure you'll decide upon will be above average, perhaps quite a bit above average. That's good. Now ask yourself, who in my line of work is now earning that kind of money? If you know, you'll have a good idea of what you have to do in order to earn it. Now, this is exactly how men move from the ranks into positions of top authority with corresponding incomes. I have no way of knowing your line of business. Regardless of the business you're in, it needs new leaders, men to come up in the years ahead. Everything is expanding, getting larger, and with the increase in size and scope, the most desperate need is for the dedicated, able person who can learn to lead, to lead the field, and to lead others as well. Some of the top executives in the nation today were once accountants, shipping clerks, struggling lawyers, service station attendants, salesmen far out in remote territories, sales clerks, mailroom boys, mechanics. You cannot think of a position from which people have not climbed to the top. Understand what I'm going to say and it'll bring you and yours everything you want. It's not the job, it's the person. It's not your present circumstances which count, but the circumstances you make up your mind to achieve that are important. The only limit on your income is you. And the income you decide upon can be achieved within the framework of your present work industry or profession where you already have a start and a place. All you need is the plan, the road map, and the courage to press on to your destination, knowing in advance that there will be problems and setbacks, but knowing also that nothing on earth can stand in the way of a plan backed by persistence and determination. With the income written down that you intend to earn, spend a part of each day thinking of ways in which you can increase your service knowing that you have only to manage this and the income will take care of itself. Since the amount of money you want to earn is more than you're now receiving, your part of the bargain is to find ways of increasing your service until the gap has been bridged, and more than bridged. Look at your card, with the three amounts written on it. By setting a financial goal, you're demonstrating faith. You will find that you'll begin to become what others call lucky. You'll begin to get good hunches and ideas. You'll take far more interest in everything about your work and your company. You'll see opportunities in your work and environment you've never noticed before. In fact, you'll soon discover you're no longer the same person. You'll care less how others are doing their jobs and concern yourself more with the manner in which you do yours. By your example, you'll inspire others to do their jobs better. Have faith in yourself and the quiet, firm inner knowledge that you can and will accomplish your goals. Know that the answers you seek will come to you in their own time, if you only keep looking for them. Above all, realize that money cannot be sought directly. Money, like happiness, is an effect. It's the result of a cause, and the cause is valuable service. Keep money in its proper place. It's a servant, nothing more. It's a tool with which we can live better, see more of the world, give our youngsters the education they need and a good start in life. It's the means to a happy, carefree retirement in later years. Money is necessary to modern life, but keep it in its place. You need only so much food to enjoy good health. You need only so much money to live comfortably, securely, and well. Too much emphasis on money reverses the whole picture. You then become the servant, and the money becomes the master. As Horace Latimer put it, it's good to have money and the things money can buy, but it's good, too, to check up once in a while and make sure that you haven't lost the things that money can't buy. Every person should know happiness in his work and home, and prosperity. These things can and should be yours. Now, play this message as often as you can during the next week. Fix your plans firmly in your mind, and relax. Keep cool and calm. Be as serene as you possibly can be. You have nothing to worry about. Right now, you may have no idea at all how the additional income you seek is going to come to you nor how you're going to save the amount you want in a savings account, or how you can possibly arrange for the retirement income you've decided upon. That isn't important. Remember that the only really important thing is that you know what you want. If you do, you will become, you must become what you think about. Be realistic about your financial goals, for as you reach them, you can then set higher goals. Trying to jump too far too soon can often result in confusion, tenseness, and worry. Take your growth in sensible, logical steps, remembering that the big thing is that you know what you want and that you realize your rewards will match your service. 
That is, that you must devise ways and means of actually becoming the person who is worth the amount of money you have established for yourself. A person may be worth more than he's getting for a while, but the two will match up. They have to. In fact, unless a person is worth more than he's now receiving, he cannot move ahead. He's receiving all he's worth. It all gets back to the great law that controls everything in the universe, cause and effect. The cause must precede the effect, or the effect cannot occur. This is why people who try to get something for nothing are only fooling themselves and earning the disillusionment and frustration they must one day reap. You can have what you want. The most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree?